Now, distancing disability from medicine, from healthcare, from uh, clinical attention was important politically. But it also left a legacy. And the legacy was that the medical needs, the healthcare needs of people with disabilities were often not seen, were not articulated, were not voiced, and hence, I think, they, until today, I think in many cases, their voice has been silenced in demanding equitable, accessible healthcare services. When I talk about disability, I give you an example of Ed Roberts. But people ask me, what is disability? What isn't it? <laughs> yeah. So I think it's very hard to define. People have struggled what to define it. I think there's no, no surprise that people always refer to diagnostic categories because it's like quite simplistic you know, to, 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 to feel a more disability. If you accept that disability is not something that's inherent in the person, but that's something that is constantly newly defined between the person and the environment, you also have to always characterize the environments. So um, that go along with it. So it's it's a moving target. We come back to that. I want you to meet um, a person called John. What is John? <laughs> Another John. Uh, a John that I encountered actually in 2003 in the US as part of my research there. And John had a spinal cord injury. Um, there's a diagnosis for you, and the spinal cord injury, the level could tell you something about the functional status. But I'm not talking about all that. I'm talking about what, uh, what John's experiences in the healthcare system were. John was unemployed, which is not surprising a lot of people with disabilities are more likely to be unemployed than the general population. And uh, that, there are a range of reasons for that. I'm not going into all these details as a group. They don't have to be, they shouldn't be, but they are, I think that's a group. Um, now, John was 52 years of age. <clears throat> he used a manual wheelchair, and so he was navigating his environment pretty well. But he's been having a spinal cord injury for quite a while. He developed also arthritis in his shoulders. Um, well, he, he thought, well, this is really getting tough made an application uh, to get an electronic, electric wheelchair, power wheelchair, to ease his life, to increase his mobility, to sustain his independence. Well, he was unemployed, so he was eligible for Medicare, but Medicare is the public insurance payer program. For some, I'm not going into details who is eligible and who is not, so I think it's a, if you accept it's a public payer program. And they said, well, that's durable medical equipment, a power wheelchair. You can't have it. It takes five years for you to be eligible to get a new one. So what do I do? Yeah. So he couldn't afford it. John couldn't afford a new power wheelchair. He used his manual wheelchair. Now what happened to him? His shoulders get, get worse and worse. Um, he needed physiotherapy. He realized he couldn't bend down actually in his wheelchair anymore to lift his feet up, which he needed to do really to relieve pressure ulcers. He ended up in hospital in emergency room services repeatedly with pressure ulcers and acute wards. <clears throat> he got discharged, got more physiotherapy, shoulders get worse, needed surgery. Um, surgery helped him uh, for a while, and guess what? He got a power wheelchair. This is ridiculous. When you think about the costs involved you know, that he has accumulated over time, in his struggle to get a power wheelchair in the first place. The suffering he's gone through, the pain he's gone through, the number of health professionals he had to go through, and the number of providers he had to petition. So his voice was ignored, his voice was not heard. And it ended up to be very costly. And Jenna, if you would just like, like to read that quote, that's what John said. What's going to happen now is it's just shortening the time I'm going to live by myself. I'm going to have to go into a nursing home eventually, but a lot quicker. It's probably cut three to five years off of my independence. 
Thank you. I think that illustrate, illustrates actually <coughs> the importance of recognizing the voice of people with disabilities early on in the healthcare process and services and to involve them, to understand about their lives, what's going on, and to prevent really excess costs as well. So there's a cost argument apart from a human rights argument. 